Hi everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. About a week ago, I put up a poll on my community tab here on the YouTube channel, as well as on Instagram, asking you all if you wanted to see me open up and tackle the third bag of Educa's Around the World Jigsaw Puzzle, or if you wanted me to crack open this Clementoni Downtown Jigsaw Puzzle. Well, both of them are 6,000 pieces. This obviously is the third bag of seven. I've already done bags one and two, whereas this one would be start to finish one single image. The artist is Ciro Marchetti. You may recognize him because I've done Ye Old Shop as well as the Zodiac Jigsaw Puzzle on this channel before. Love his artwork, so much fun. He has a lot of his artwork turned into jigsaw puzzles. Bright, bold, beautiful, so much fun. Okay, so the results are in. I have them written here on a piece of paper. The Educa third bag got 98 votes. And Clementoni's downtown got 143 votes. So there you go. I am going to just set this aside for a little bit longer. Don't worry. I promise I will get back to the Educa Around the World Jigsaw Puzzle. I will, I promise. But for now, let's take a little detour downtown and do this beautiful, bright, colorful jigsaw puzzle. Once again, I have my hopes up so high that I'm going to love this jigsaw puzzle that I hope not to be disappointed. I just think it's, it's just so pretty, so colorful. Just looking at the bags, first of all, these pieces look to be more of a typical standard size. And in fact, the overall finish size is quite big. I used two boards to do the Educa uh, section on, and I think <laughs> this one will just fit on the two boards. I may have to go buy something bigger, hopefully not. But also, the finish looks really nice, doesn't look too shiny, and I think overall it'll be easier on my eyes, hopefully. Now the size reference image that I have for Educa's Around the World is, is quite small, it's not very big. But at least this one is about just over two sizes bigger. However, it's on the box, so there's no poster. I really wish they would have included a poster. I've asked my husband, he's going to try to scan the image and print it out for me so I have a paper fold out that I could refer to. I can, however, prop up the box, but I definitely won't want to hold the box and keep it close to me while puzzling. So the first thing I'm going to do is sort all the pieces. I think it'll mostly be by color, golds, reds, blues, multicolored pieces, purples, greens. There may have to be some subsorting once I come to grabbing piles. I find when you're sorting a really large size jigsaw puzzle, like partway through the sort, you're like, oh, I should subsort these pieces. And, and you know, the initial sorting starts one way and by the time you're done, it, it's quite a bit different. And that's okay, it's 6,000 pieces, so it's a lot. Now during the voiceover, I'm not too sure what much to talk about because I've already spoken about this artist and I thought maybe during the time lapse for the sorting I could tell you how I came to acquire this jigsaw puzzle because you've not seen it at any shopping halls so far. But beyond that, I'm not too sure what to chat about. So if you have any requests, comments of things you would like me to discuss, leave your comments below. We could talk about hot air balloons. Um, perhaps the style of architecture, but I think this will end up being probably three videos. I feel like a 6,000 piece is about a three video series. So we'll have plenty of time to discuss a few different things. I always find something to chat about, but if you have any suggestions, leave your comments below. But for now, and for the love of puzzles, let's get to building Clementoni's downtown jigsaw puzzle. So you're probably wondering, how I came to acquire this jigsaw puzzle because I haven't shown it any of my shopping hauls. Basically, when I was sorting the pieces from Graphica's 6,000 piece vintage travel jigsaw puzzle, I use often um, boxes from previous jigsaw puzzles as sorting trays. And I've kept a lot of Clementoni boxes because they're high quality, very good quality. And I had the box from Ye Old Shop, which was another jigsaw puzzle with the image from Ciro Marchetti. And I remember when I was picking up that vintage travel jigsaw puzzle in all the brown and I flipped that box over 
and it reminded me of how much I enjoyed doing that jigsaw puzzle. It was colorful, it was whimsy, it was just fun. And I thought, I wonder what other jigsaw puzzles have been made with Chiro Maccheri's artwork on it. I know it's always bright and colorful. And then I thought, isn't there, isn't there a big Clementoni jigsaw puzzle? I think there is. So some late night Googling <laughs> led me to, of course, find the Clementoni 6000 please downtown jigsaw puzzle with his artwork on it. And I thought, what are the chances that I'm going to find it in New Zealand for a reasonable price? I thought, well, might as well look. And recently I've come across a new online retailer here in New Zealand that actually has a wide variety of jigsaw puzzles at very decent prices. So I think this was a good price. I paid, what was it, 80 New Zealand dollars with shipping for this jigsaw puzzle. I think that was well worth it. I have no idea how much it costs in the rest of the world, but for a 6,000 piece Clementoni high quality jigsaw puzzle here in New Zealand, $80 well spent. And I thought, yeah, let's just go ahead. Let's just buy it. Let's just get it. And when it arrived, I was so happy. I just wanted to dive right in right away. Just even through the bag, the pieces looked beautiful and colorful and quite nice. I was so happy. So here you see me sorting. And of course, I had to build as I sort. I couldn't just sort the pieces. And I know I have a lot of different sections going on, but they all make sense to me. And I'll explain to you in a bit all the different piles and what I'm doing. A lot of those boxes that I'm using right there are Clementoni boxes, one of which is probably the Ye Old Shop box, just because of their durability and versatility. So if you can reuse your jigsaw bus bu puzzle boxes for sorting trays, do you do that as well? Oh my goodness. But yeah, I, I had to get it. And it made me so happy, especially after all the brown from the vintage travel jigsaw puzzle. This was the pop of color that I needed, absolutely. And that's what I did. I just decided on a whim to buy it, see if I could find it. And I did, and I snatched it up, and I'm so pleased that I did. So I hope you enjoy watching me put it all together. I finished the sorting. It took me five hours and 54 minutes. So basically an hour per thousand pieces. One thing I have to comment on, there's hardly any puzzle dust. Like there's none visible remaining in the bag. And there's a little bit on my table and I'll be able to clean it off, but nowhere near the amount of puzzle dust I expected. Okay, do these make sense, these piles? First of all, I was, I had to start building. I mean, look how lovely it is. I did a lot of the doves and the, um, the birds and these like tile stone roofs. I did those, a couple of the flags. I had to start building, it was so much fun. So here I have all the border pieces. Here I have all the pieces with some greenery, leaves, from trees and bushes. Here I have all these special red tile roofs from the buildings and gold, so red and gold, the specialty red. This is part near the water. It's like the doors at the, I don't know if they're doors or whatnot, but they're, you know, they have this gold ornate kind of design on them and their reflection in the water, so that pile. This ended up being a lot bigger than I expected. This is all what I think is the water, the reflection in the water, maybe some of the boats and the swans that are down there. So this is quite a big pile. Then I have over here, let's move it very gently. This is all, oh goodness, I don't want to tip it because I don't want to mix it. Ah, can you see that? With, ah, no, not going to tip it more. So all the blues, then um, the sky and then any sky that had a bit of like a star in it and then all the off colors the whites the pinks the purpley colors so that's in that big box right there I'm gonna move that off completely in this box here again I don't want to mix it too much I believe I have all the um, hot air balloons and then some more sky but I think there's the moon this actually might be some flags or part of hot air balloons I'm not sure yet now, way back there, and I can't move it. I still have the big box. Here's the big box. Those were those ornate doors with the gold that I was referring to. 
I have back there now, I have all kind of brownish building pieces and there's some red flooring kind of divided. This is basically what's going to end up being the transition pieces. I believe these are all pieces that'll show the transition between the sky and the buildings. I think I'm going to do that pretty early on. And then over here, these are all pieces that were colorful flags or the sails from the boats. And then finally, some pieces next to it of buildings that I thought stood out a bit more. So for example, this darker building here, or this one or that one. Oh, it was just so much fun to sort. And I had so much fun building some of it as I went along. I have to figure out where to put everything now because it's a lot. So basically, this board is not large enough for the jigsaw puzzle. I need two of them and I do have two. There's one sitting on top of the other. Um, and I have to pull the table out a bit and rearrange everything. Usually I wait for my hubby to help me. He's still at work for the next several hours and I really want to get to building. So I might, I might try to do it on myself or I might just build some here and do some close-ups and then try to move the pieces later on. But you can get an idea of scale of how big things are. For example, let me bring you over this little four piece and it, it holds together quite nicely. So can you see that? That's a little dove. That dove right there corresponds to this itty bitty tiny dove right there on the box. So that gives you an idea of scale of how big this jigsaw puzzle is gonna be. Oh, but I've had so much fun so far. Absolutely love it. So I just got to get cracking into it. It's going to be beautiful. I know the sky, the blue, probably leave that to the end, is going to be difficult. The border might be a bit tricky. But besides that, the rest of this is going to be so much fun. One concern I have, and I hope it'll come off on camera, see all those kind of brownish, typical goldish brownish building pieces? I hope they show up on the board here because I'm not using my photographer's gray. It's kind of similar in color. So I'm hoping, oh, not that piece. That piece took a walk. Find that later. Oh my gosh. Where'd it go? A piece falls on the floor and it manages to jump into the next time zone, seriously. So I'm worried these pieces won't show up so well on camera while I'm building them. Hopefully though. But there you go. The sorting is all done. So much fun. I thought we could chat a bit about hot air balloons. Now I've never been up in one. Leave a comment below if you have and let me know your experience. I don't mind planes whatsoever. In fact, I've been, been in many flights. I would say probably close to 100 takeoffs and landings and some in very, very small planes like four seaters. I've never been in a helicopter though. I don't think I would enjoy the motion of a helicopter. And the hot air balloon, I feel it might be too open. So I've never been in one either. Well, a hot air balloon was actually the first successful human carrying flight technology. It was invented in 1783 by Joseph and Stephen Montgolfier, and the first untethered manned hot air balloon flight was performed by Jean-François Pilatre de Rosier and François Laurent d'Arlande on November 21st, 1783 in Paris, France. And it was in a balloon created by the Montgolfier brothers. A hot air balloon is a lighter than air aircraft consisting of a bag called an envelope. I did not know it was called an envelope. I thought it was called a balloon, <laughs> but I guess the technical term is an envelope. And that's what contains the hot air, or I should say the heated air. Now suspended beneath it is a gondola or a wicker basket. And in some cases for long distance or high altitude balloons, it's a capsule. So I'm assuming then it would be fully enclosed. And that's what carries the passengers as well as the source of heat. And in most cases is an open flame caused by burning liquid propane. The heated air inside the envelope makes it buoyant since it has a lower density than the colder air outside the envelope. Hot air balloons cannot fly beyond the atmosphere. So the envelope does not have to be sealed at the bottom since the air inside the envelope is about at the same pressure as the surrounding air. Now in modern sport balloons, the envelope is generally made from nylon fabric and the inlet of the balloon, which is closest to the burning flame, is made from a fire resistant material such as Nomex. 
Modern balloons have been made in many shapes, such as rocket ships and the shapes of various commercial products, though the traditional shape is used for most non-commercial and many commercial applications. Modern day hot air ballooning using a controlled propane burner and nylon fabric was invented in 1961 by Ed Yost at Raven Industries. Hot air balloons that can be propelled through the air rather than simply drifting with the wind are known as thermal airships. I did not know there was such a thing as a propellable hot air balloon. Is propellable even a word? If not, I just invented it. Hot air balloons are able to fly to extremely high altitudes. On November 26, 2005, Singhania, hopefully I've said their name correctly, they set the world altitude record for the highest hot air balloon flight, reaching 21,027 meters. That's nearly 69,000 feet. He took off from downtown Mumbai, India and landed 240 kilometers away, about 150 miles south from there. Steve Fawcett, an American aviator, was the first person ever to travel around the entire globe on a solo balloon flight. He launched the 10 story high balloon called Spirit of Freedom from Northern Western Australia on June 19th and returned to Australia on July 3rd in 2002, subsequently landing in Queenstown. Now the duration and distance of this solo balloon flight was 13 days, eight hours, 33 minutes of nearly 30, just over 33,000 kilometers, which is about 21,000 miles. The balloon dragged him along the ground for 20 minutes at the end of the flight. Only the capsule survived the landing. It was taken to the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, DC, where it was displayed. Now his top speed during the flight was 299 kilometers per hour, which is about 186 miles per hour. And that was over the Indian Ocean. Now the trip set a number of records for ballooning, like the fastest, um, breaking his own previous record for speed, I guess, the fastest around the world, the longest distance flown solo in a balloon, and actually the longest 24 hour balloon distance. So definitely he set quite a few world records there. But yeah, I found this so very interesting. I know here in New Zealand, we do have some hot air ballooning in various um, places that you can go up as a tourist. I just, I would, I love the idea of going up and being free and feeling like you're flying and seeing everything. I just don't think I'm gonna enjoy the motion of it. I think I'd probably get motion sick. But then again, leave your comments below. I wanna know your experience. Have you ever been up in a hot air balloon? I love this jigsaw puzzle. I love it, I love it, I love it to the point where I'm like, oh, I need to go run an errand. I, I, just five more minutes, five more minutes I'll go. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna eat some dinner, just, just five more minutes and no, I really don't have to pee, I don't have to pee. My, my eyes are floating and I'm like, no, just, just one more piece. I just don't wanna stop. It's so much fun. This is everything you want in a large size jigsaw puzzle. The pieces, beautiful, nice thickness, nice durability, like no puzzle dust. I don't even know how they managed to do it. Barely any puzzle dust whatsoever. The pieces, a good variety of piece shapes, a good variety of prong shapes. I hope that will help me out when it comes to the sky because there's a lot of blue there. And so I'll be able to give you an update further down the line once I get to the sky if there truly is a variety of those pieces. So far it feels like it, but I've been doing relatively easier sections. Oh my goodness, the colors, vibrant, beautiful. The finish on the piece, like depending on the angle of the light, it might look a little shiny, but really overall, it's a nice finish, not too much glare, not too much shine, just lovely. And the image itself, I mean, down where the water is, it's meant to be a reflection. So I know that's supposed to be a little blurry-ish, but even that, the detail is amazing. I spent six hours sorting, loved every minute of the sort. I love taking each piece and really looking at them and investigating and 
where you go and what do you do and what part do you belong to. And the pieces, there were very few pieces that I didn't know where to classify them because the detail was so nice on every single piece. Loved it. I picked out a few things to build as I sort because sorting does get, you know, a little tiresome after a while. So I always pick and choose a couple of things to build as I sort, things that stand out and are easy to do. So in total, I've spent 13 hours working on this jigsaw puzzle now. And I feel I've got a lot done. I tried to put my camera further back. I know you still can't see the entire board. So the surface I'm working on is 1200 millimeters by 1800 millimeters. So it's quite large. And I think it's just going to barely fit on it. And I'm trying to remember to do close-ups as well as the GoPro full overhead shot because I will admit I'm loving the jigsaw puzzle so much that I'm forgetting that I also want to film and get like nice footage for you all to watch. And I'm like, oh yeah, I, f I forgot to start the camera. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot to turn on the lights properly. I'm just so engrossed with this jigsaw puzzle. Love it. So my thing is, if you've done a thousand piece puzzle and you want to do a, a larger size, I say go up 1,000, try a 2,000. Then 2,000, try a 3,000 piece. And maybe if at that point you've done a 3,000 piece jigsaw puzzle and you're like, yeah, I really love this. This is lots of fun. Perhaps then you could jump to a 6,000 piece jigsaw puzzle. And this would definitely be a puzzle that I recommend because I feel it's easy enough to get going and feel like you're accomplishing things because there's very distinct things to work on very distinct colors oh, I'm just absolutely loving it and it's beautiful and I'm just rambling and even today I'm like oh I got to film some close-ups I got to do my outro I got to do my voiceover I got to get the video all done and then I'm like but no I, I just want to keep puzzling <laughs> I, I'm loving it this is making me so happy now Normally, again, the antique world map, that would be the type of puzzle I would recommend to someone who would want a bit more of a challenge. It is only 5,000 pieces, so a thousand piece less than this, but I feel it's a bit more difficult of an image, but still very much doable. Because with the antique world map, the Robinsberger one, um, there were very distinct areas you could work on. The lines of latitude, longitude, areas with land, the wording, and there's blue pieces and red pieces. It was still very much enjoyable and you could delineate sections to work on, but definitely would be more challenging than this one. Oh, I don't have an affiliate link. This is not sponsored or anything by Clementoni. I just, I just love it. I absolutely love it. Do you have this jigsaw puzzle? Have you done it? Are you doing it? What do you think? It's bringing me so much joy. Like it truly is. I think maybe hopefully two more videos. I should probably end up having it done. I don't know. I only did 13 hours. I was hoping to do closer to 15, but I want to get the video out. And then, yeah, I got to vacuum the house. Like everything is falling to the bottom of the priority list because all I want to do is this jigsaw puzzle. And that's when you know you're truly enjoying a puzzle when you, you just don't want, can't pull yourself away. The one thing also I noticed, remember I said I would have liked a poster. I actually, I don't mind the box. I just gotta be careful with it. I'm setting it down and it's actually nice cause it's raised up. So the picture ends up being closer to me and I'm putting like my different boxes with my different sections of pieces on top of it. And then I move it. But to tell you the truth, because it's such a lovely jigsaw puzzle, I'm referring to the image, but not as much, I think, as maybe I used to or I normally would. Oh, it's so much fun. It truly is so much fun. So I really, really hope you enjoy this video. I hope you enjoyed the voiceover. I can't wait to get cracking and to do more. I just can't wait to see it all come together. Of course, I'm not looking too much forward to the sky. I think the water will be a bit tricky too, but we'll get there. And I know that I will rotate the board once I finally do the sky to have it closer to me so I'm not reaching. I've been doing a lot of reaching and that's not good. I wish I had more room to move all the way around the jigsaw puzzle. My back has kind of been a little niggly. But yeah, besides that, just absolutely lovely. Oh, just beautiful, colorful, joyful. Absolutely joyful. Oh. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please consider subscribing and until next time, 
Ciao!